We know proper nutrition is essential to students. What and when they eat significantly affects their ability to learn. The Appleton Area School District in Wisconsin is taking a community-wide approach to school nutrition. It began in 1997 at Appleton Central Alternative High School with a pioneering healthy food program sponsored by Natural Ovens of Manitowoc. In January of 1997, I visited Central High School as a prospective employee and observed the students that were housed here at the time and found them to be rude, obnoxious, uh, very crude, and ill-mannered. I was brought over to the school because the school was out of control. They were having a lot of problems with uh, rebellious students, weapons violation, things of that nature. So they wanted a cop on school premise at all times. We started the food program approximately three and a half years ago. One Friday, the kids were here, they had candy machines and pop machines in the student lounge. The following Monday they came to school and they were greeted by water coolers and um, healthy bagels and energy drink for breakfast. Since we started the program, the Nutrition the Natural Ovens program, with the complete diet, the balanced diet, I have seen a total change in the students and the environment within the school. It's amazing. Now that I actually have a job here, I was hesitant once again to start and found that the atmosphere is entirely different. The, the students are, are calm, um, they're well behaved. Um, I don't have to deal with the, the daily discipline issues. Out and out disciplining of students, that just isn't an issue here. Every year we are required to file a state report. On the state report, they include information regarding the number of dropouts, expulsions, drugs, weapons, suicides. Since we've started this program, zeros is what I have had to report. It's a pretty nice report to fill out. I think they served as an inspiration in the rest of the district. And we found out that not only did it help those kids, but it helped all kids. So it wasn't just the kids in the alternative high school, it's kids in general. And the returning students are now the advocates for the program. The kids encourage each other, uh, they set the example, and they demonstrate proper eating habits to the new kids. It works great. Well, when I have kids asking me, hey Dan, you know, how much do you work out a week? What do you do here? What do you eat? Is this what you eat all the time? And it's almost like now the kids are interested. Well, I, physically I couldn't be able to run long distance. I couldn't be able to do flips or sports or work out is to my ability if I wasn't eating right. When I first came here, I, I really liked the food. Um, it tastes good, uh, it's hot, it's fresh, yeah, there's no preservatives in it, there's no too much seasoning, anything like that. Um, it just helped a lot to have some people that put that much time and effort into your food. Students, teachers, and staff all notice students' improved attitude from a social work standpoint, I think it's made my job easier because I don't, we don't have the angry outbursts that we're dealing with, so instead, we get to deal with the real issues that are underlying and causing some of the problems and the concerns in our kids' lives. And I think it's easier to talk to kids today than it was a few years ago before we started the program, before the kids were getting the basic nutrition in their diet. It's the education process that they're receiving, they're feeling worthwhile about themselves over here, or it's the food that they're receiving, or it's a combination of all three. I like the all three put together because their kids are a lot more productive than they've ever been in their lives. Now that I concentrate, I think it is easier to get along with people because now I'm paying attention to what they have to say and just not worrying about what I need to say to them. Our biggest problems right now at this school are parking in the parking lot and student tardiness. I don't have the disruptions in class or the difficulties with student behavior that perhaps I experienced four years ago before we started the food program. Let's take a look at the things that kids are consuming during the day. Sometimes the parents know what they're doing, other times they have no idea how much they're consuming of these kinds of junk foods, fast foods that are doing very definite harm to their bodies. Start with breakfast, quick toaster type breakfast loaded with sugar, the artificially flavored cereals, the donuts, the icing, the candy bars that they consume throughout the day. 
the artificial coloring appetite stimulants again, causing them to overeat. The things that are supposed to look like fruit, and yet they're practically all sugar. The pizza loaded with fat. Then you have the burgers, the french fries, the hot dogs, the chips, partially hydrogenated trans fats that are plugging the arteries of children as early as age three. The soda, the sugar, 56 teaspoons at least in this two liter bottle, which some kids consume in one day's time. Again, the artificial colorings and flavorings, the diet soda, the artificial sweeteners, known to cause headaches, known to cause behavior problems. How can we expect our children to function well, to learn at their best, and to behave when they're being fed this kind of junk? A lot of these kids, when we first asked them, what did you have for breakfast today? You'd be surprised that 90% of them had absolutely nothing, and we were at lunchtime already. So they've had no breakfast, no lunch, and they're trying to be productive people without anything in their system at all. If you've been guzzling Mountain Dew and eating chips and you know you're flying all over the place, I don't think you're going to pick up a whole lot in class. Healthy food has had more of an impact than we thought. We believed that it would help settle the kids down, which it has done, but I think we were surprised the impact it's had on academic learning. Good healthy food that uh, helps you function pretty much. If you're going for a big test, you want to eat right. Let's take a look at the kinds of foods children should be eating, the fresh whole grain foods, to start the morning to get that energy going so that they feel good and they're alert throughout the day. Whole grain cereals, nice good proteins, fresh fruit, the whole grain breads, whole grain muffins, bagels, great granola bars, the wonderful omega-3 that gets the brain going for the whole day. Keep sustained energy. For lunch, let's keep them going with the fresh whole foods. The salads, the wonderful combinations of the leafy greens, the vegetables, the good soups that make them feel so good. See the vibrance, the liveness of the foods, the juice, real. 100% juice, the real thing, water, at least eight glasses of water a day to keep the brain functioning. If the brain is made of 85% water and it's down 2%, the kids can't think, they can't respond properly. Add to this the exercise and you have a bright, lively, energetic, well-behaved child. We all know that children can only perform their best learn their best and behave their best when they're well nourished. These are the kinds of foods your child should be consuming. Personally, I think I've been able to demand more academically from my students over the last few years than I could when we first opened the school without the nutrition program. I use all of the minutes in the class period for instruction. At Appleton Central, they led the way on more water, healthier food, healthier eating, and then when we put the Johnston Elementary School where there was better eating coupled with exercise, we pretty much approached it from the oldest students and the youngest. Education for Healthy Kids was born out of a concern for uh, the smoking tobacco and uh, those type of issues, and so they said if we started early in kindergarten one, two, um, could we make a difference and a change in some of the behaviors for the students. Then the nutrition committee was formed for the district. All the facts and information, we wanted to make sure that at, when we developed a district-wide nutrition policy, that it was based on sound principles, that it was based on um, practices, that it was based on research. We also incorporate into the classrooms inf information on wellness, information on nutrition, those types of things, so they are blended right into the core curriculums. They love doing lessons like this. They love comparing the cereals that they eat. I have a daughter, Courtney, who's in kindergarten here. It's a partnership with the school. And you reinforce these habits at home. They're being reinforced at school. And your child is, is starting from a very early age, learning the impacts of this is what it takes to be a healthy kid. We saw our fitness scores skyrocket. 
Uh, most of our kids, even to this day, are, are well above the 85th percentile in physical fitness scores, which is exceptional. And the enthusiasm that the Appleton Alternative High School staff has for healthier eating enabled us to convince the middle school with the elementary students from Johnson going to Madison that your kids are going to be more alert and your teaching job is going to be a lot easier. We had a couple initiative goings with the um, Natural Ovens of Manitowoc and the Education for Healthy Kids program, the changes in the middle school, that we had a lot of things going that were making differences in students' lives. And when the kids actually left elementary and then went to the middle school, they wanted to see a change in that environment. The time had come to take it seriously and to uh, extend respect to the students and to ourselves and, and take some action on good health. It certainly helps our cause in having the students from Johnston coming up because they've been introduced to the topics, really grabs hold with them and it helps them to reinforce some of the things with their classmates, which is coming from their classmates as opposed to coming from me, the principal, or from the other adults in the building or from their parents. I do notice that when I give the instructions in Spanish, they are listening, I have the eye contact, they're paying attention, they look more alert. Uh, the, the nutrition fair that we're doing today was uh, actually done for the first time three years ago. And the concept was to expose students to a number of healthy choices that are available to them right in their community, to reinforce the concept that they have choices they can make. Now that the district has a nutrition policy in place, I think it's become very helpful that the kids that are coming from here are going to East and probably have helped the student body there become more accepting of some of the policies that have gone into place there. When this first came about that we were going to be moving to getting rid of the soda and, and changing our nutrition policy, I was very much against it because I think that at the high school level it's different from the elementary, it's different from the middle because we're trying to prepare students to make good choices for themselves after high school. It's good to have kids start to eat healthy and stuff and worry more about their nutrition because in the long run that's going to pay off. Obviously you eat healthier your whole life, you'll probably live a lot longer than if you eat junk food the whole time. I notice in conference time a lot of parents will say, you know that nutrition unit is really making a difference. But I think we are a progressive district and we've had this nutrition policy developing at some of our elementary and middle level schools and it didn't really make its way up to the high school until this year. That really came about because of some specific parents that saw a need for us to do something about our nutrition policy. This is the first generation in history that might not outlive their parents because of health and lifestyle issues, nutrition and fitness. If they don't have that, what's their health worth to them? It's a connection that when we started the healthier foods in the alternative high school, and we noticed that all of a sudden the attendance rate had gone way up. Our dropout rate um, last year, only 16 students dropped out out of 4,500 high school age students. I can't buy the argument that it's too costly for schools to provide good nutrition for their students. I found that one cost will reduce another. I don't have the vandalism. I don't have the litter. I don't have the need for high security. We've cut $5 million out of our operational budget in the last two years. We did 35 focus groups in the community, and not one person brought up the issue of you should get back into junk type foods because they see that healthy lifestyles is important. I believe in three or four years every school in the country will be into a nutrition program because the more schools that are going in that direction, they're seeing it does make a difference. The parents are happy that we care that much about their children. We've got to stop using our most precious commodity, our kids, to make extra money. Thank you to the schools, staff, and students of the Appleton Area School District. The school lunch program became an act of Congress in 1946. The fresh foods served at the Appleton, Wisconsin Central Alternative School embrace the spirit of the law to provide every nutrient to each student each day. You may duplicate this video or DVD, but only intact and unedited for showing to help provide nutritious foods to children.